Hello once again, AP Calc BC students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are going to start really the last topic of Unit 7 that one would need for uh, advanced placement calculus, and especially for those of you that are BC students. It's all focused about the, the logistic differential equation, which is a slightly different kind of differential equation that typically exists a little bit more often out there in the world than the normal uninhibited growth equation. And so what I'm going to do with this particular video is introduce what the formulas are for both the derivative form and its solution. And we're going to take a look at a, I don't know, a pretty cool activity that uh, you could simulate in your classroom, especially for those of you that are teachers, to really demonstrate what this equation is all about. So to get things started, we're going to take a look here at my notes, and I'm going to move my camera out of the way here so we can read this. And it's kind of like a, a lot of words, right? A lot of a lot of information here. But let's read this together here. In AB calculus, the exponential growth model was derived from the fact that the rate of change of a variable is directly proportional to the value of y. And so that means you typically saw <clears throat> a differential equation like dy over dx equals k times y. And it turned out to have a differential uh, a differential equation that has had the solution y equals c e to the kt. We call that kect in my classroom. And you may have known that that exponential growth is unlimited. We call that uh, an uninhibited differential equation. However, when you describe a population, there's also going to exist some upper limit past which that growth can't occur, and it's a lot more realistic. If you have a population of rabbits in an area, they can only grow to be so large, right? Because they're going to compete for the resources and, and um, just the general space, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the upper limit L we call the carrying capacity. Some of you that have taken AP biology may be somewhat familiar with that phrase. And that simply represents the maximum population that can be sustained. That kind of model is called the logistic differential equation. And it has a little bit of a different um, appearance to it. So if you kind of look over there <laughs> to the left side of the screen, you'll see that dy dt is k times y multiplied by the quantity 1 minus y over L. So a lot more going on with that particular equation than just k times y, right? And then we know that k and, and L are going to be positive constants in this particular situation, okay? Now, if we were to solve that differential equation, it results in this y equal l over 1 plus b times e to the negative kt power. I like to call that l over 1 plus bect, not to be confused with kect. And I know that it might be worth mentioning that the negative sign here is going to be built into the formula if we realize that k is going to be positive. And that's going to in, in introduce our idea of growth. And I know you might think, well, wait a minute, isn't e to the negative power decay? It is, but if you have e to the negative power in the denominator, that's going to mean growth. So what I want to do with this is I want to simulate an activity that will bring about this logistic differential equation solution and then shed a little bit more light on some of its components. For instance, the fact that that carrying capacity L is always going to be in that numerator and that it always seems to have this one plus Bect form. So let's take a look at that right now. So here we are with our TI Inspire technology. Now I am going to simulate this using the Texas Instrument TI Inspire CAS calculator and if you are a teacher, let's say, that wants to demonstrate this with your students, you can certainly do this virtually on any graphing calculator that has regression capabilities. And I'll kind of give you some more instructions about how you can do that. Teachers, if you're watching, if you take a look at the link in the description below, I have a full set of directions on how you can run this activity in your class, depending on what 
type of technology you have. Students, just get a sip right back and kind of listen to the simulation and see if this makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a list and spreadsheet page, which is kind of like an Excel page. And here's our situation. You are going into your school for a overnight sort of lock-in. You and 39 of your best friends for a total of 40 students are going to hang out in your AP calculus classroom and in the hallways, bringing in your sleeping bags and your Xboxes and your Playstations and your board games, and you're gonna order pizza and just hang out there all night. Heck, what else would you wanna do on a Saturday night, right? And so what we have is the very first day, we have some students that are entering this particular classroom. And let's kind of like, let's make this even more exciting. Let's say that you wanna spend like more than a week in your classroom. Okay, you're going to really go for the long haul. But there's a problem. At the very beginning, one of your classmates happens to be infected with zombie-itis, and they are a zombie. But you're kind of naive to the fact of who this person is, because they haven't fully taken into the zombie form just yet. And so on the very, very beginning of this trip there's one person that's a zombie and so you spend the first night in the classroom and what happens is that overnight this zombie decides to try to infect other classmates by biting them and turning them into zombies now teachers when you simulate this in your classroom you could use a random number generator either on a graphing calculator or using two six-sided dice check out the directions for the details. But let's say that overnight, we had two additional students that were infected by this first zombie. So that means when the next day starts, there are a total of three zombies. Now you would think that we'd wanna get out of there, right? But yet these zombies are really chill. They don't really show those symptoms of zombie infestation until many, many days go by. So you just think that they're acting a little strange, but you know, hey, you know, it's high school, right? <laughs> so the next night, these three zombies get kind of active and while students are sleeping, they go around and they infect four more students. So that means we would have a total of seven zombies by the second day. Now, as you can see, there's going to be more and more zombies that have the ability to infect students. And so it only stands to reason that each day we would likely see more infestations. So by day three, we have a total of 14 infestations, seven additional. And we just keep this going and going and going. And at day five, 33 zombies. And at day six, we would have four more zombies. You can see maybe it's slowing down a little bit. And the reason why it's slowing down a little bit is because zombies are stupid. Zombies will sometimes bite people that already are, are infected because they don't know any better. And so we get to the point at day seven that maybe you and all 39 of your classmates have officially entered zombiedom. So remember, there were only 40 students total. So what we're going to do with this data is we're going to sketch it. We're going to graph this. And the best way to do that is to add a page on the Inspire. That would be a data and statistics page. And we see that I can choose my axes names. And for the x-axis, I'm going to call that our time or day. And then for our y-axis, that will be our zombies. And so we have this sort of graph that shows a quick increase that suddenly transitions into a slower increase. But the really cool thing about this is that we can actually affix an equation to this. And I will use the TI Inspire capabilities to do just that. If I go into Menu, Analyze, I can choose Regression. And the regression model that I want to choose it's going to be all the way down, not so much at the bottom, but even in the next grouping, 
option B and C are showing your logistic equations. And I know that there's a bit of a difference between the D equals zero and the D does not equal zero. And it's not quite obvious what they actually mean, but the D equals zero is a little bit more suited for growth, whereas the D does not equal zero is a little bit more suited for decay because you can have logistic decay like in an instance when you've got uh, a, an item like a cake taken out of the oven and it's cooling down to room temperature. It's never going to go below room temperature. So there's like this lower limit, right? You might know that as Newton's law of cooling. So because that this is a uh, logistic differential equation that shows growth, we're going to choose option B. And when we do that, wow, we have that curve, that S-shaped curve, that's so synonymous with logistic differential equation right down there. And if you take a look really closely at the numerator, you see 40.5, which I know isn't exactly what our carrying capacity was of 40 students, but it's pretty darn close. And we can chalk that up a lot to the fact that it's a pretty small sample size. Apply this to a, you're a town of say 50,000, 200,000, a million people, and use that data in a zombie infestation, you're probably going to get even more favorable results. So we're pretty close to that carrying capacity of 40, which is the total number of people that can possibly be infected, because that's the total people in the school. And then the denominator, you've got that one plus that we talked about. Now we'll go into further detail about how to find the B value and the K value in some later videos that I have for you. But I thought that this would give you a, a bit of a, 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 a preview of what's in store for the logistic differential equation. So if you're a student, hang around, watch some of the future videos about how we can further investigate this and show you how these problems are actually assessed on the AP exam. And if you're a teacher, don't forget to check out the link in the description below to run this activity in your classroom. Till next time, we'll see ya. Keep studying your calculus.